Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the CHS Weekly Report. This is your host, WDSO Max Good, and today I'm talking to Darren Guest about the upcoming gaming event, Region Con 2023. Darren, welcome to the show and thank you for coming in. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. First, could you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Uh, I'm Darren Guest. Uh, I've got four children, three stepchildren, uh, four grandchildren. I'm a teacher, a gamer, NFL super fan. Go Chiefs. You can see my Chief stuff on today. Uh, I graduated from River Forest High School in 1990, Purdue University in 2015, as well as being a uh, veteran of the United States Navy. Oh, nice. Well, before we go into detail, could you give us a little rundown about your event? Yeah, Region Con is a local charity gaming convention, providing tabletop gamers with a venue to meet, play games, play in tournaments, and tabletop games that they wouldn't normally be able to play in because, you know, maybe not uh, enough people in the area play it. And uh, we have, you know, we have vendors selling their wares and table that tabletop gamers would actually find interesting. And in. that's awesome. So, where and when will it be held? It's going to be held at Saint Sava Serbian Orthodox Pavil- Church Pavilion at uh, ninety one ninety one Mississippi Street in Maryville on Friday, April twenty first, and Saturday, April twenty second, from ten a.m. to ten p.m. each day. Nice. So, is there a cost to attend the event? Yes, there is. Uh, we have since it's a two-day event, we have a one-day pass. It's only it's for only twenty-five dollars, or both days is only forty dollars. Uh, anybody who pre-registers will also uh, receive a complimentary Region Con T-shirt with, that'll have our logo on the front. In addition, anybody that presents a valid military ID or veteran, uh, first responder or retired, or a high school active high school or college ID student ID, will receive a seven-dollar meal voucher that they can use either at uh, the pavilion where the church is providing lunch and dinner, or they can uh, use that meal voucher as well at Ricochet Tacos, the food truck that's going to be there that day. Sweet. So are tickets available at the door? Yes. Uh, you can pre-register, which obviously gives you the extra perk of the uh, getting the T-shirt complimentary. But, yeah, you can get tickets at the door. Uh, if you, you know, walk in anytime, you can get uh, – if you walk in on Friday and you want both days, you can get a two-day pass that day. Or if you can get a one day if you want to do the one day at a time. Is it an all-ages event? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we encourage gaming at all ages. matter of fact, uh, we started, my granddaughter last night started painting her first uh, tabletop miniature, so she's uh, she really loved that. It didn't look very pretty, but hey, she's two. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, we encourage that at all ages. We actually have a uh, uh, 12 and under, gets in Region Con free. It doesn't cost them anything. So yeah, we definitely encourage that. We've got some uh, kids things going on where uh, we have a Dungeons & Dragons table just for kids. Uh, we have we're gonna do like a marble run, like little competition. So each you know each child can do like a dollar, and they get to choose a marble. And if their marble wins, they get part of the prize and stuff like that. So we got things planned for the children as well. Sounds like a lot of fun. So is this your first year for Region Con? Um, yes and no. We we are basically a rebrand of what used to be called Arcticon. Uh, Arcticon started in around 2008, where um, it was the same principle. It was a gaming convention. Uh, charity gaming convention that a friend of mine had uh, came up with. He saw the need for a gaming convention in the area where there had been some in the past that you know just didn't make it for whatever reason. And he wanted to take it a step further and make it a charity convention as well as a gaming convention. Uh, unfortunately, we lost him in January of 2021. And uh, at that point, we just, there was a few of us that worked with him decided, you know what, we're going to continue on that tradition, not only in his name, but because the community needs it. When I say community Northwest Indiana. And, you know, we're just going to carry it on. And uh, due to respect for his family wishes, since it was his baby, they didn't want us to use the Arcticon. So we just rebranded it as Region Con. So how did the idea for Region Con come about? Uh, you know, uh, I honestly wish I could say it was mine. But, you know, as I said a couple minutes ago, uh, Ben came up with the idea that he wanted to have a, a gaming convention that uh, that people could go to for, for the playing the games and for tournaments and that they normally wouldn't have access to that would be providing charity for different charities across the uh, country. You know, for the name, we held a contest for, uh, I created a Region Con group page on Facebook, and we had a little contest on there where a lot of people that were on Arcticon came to the Region Con page, and a, a gentleman named Daniel Gibson won the contest, Region Con, uh, basically because a lot of people in this area, if you're from Northwest Indiana, you're from the region. Everybody's kind of heard of that thing, so we kind of went with Region Con. With our, with our name. It, I mean, it just fit. So are there any plans to continue Region Con in the future? And if so, how would you like to see it evolve? Oh, definitely. We, uh, you know, again, Arcticon was for, we had about 12 years. And then with COVID, we had to stop for a couple of years. But, we, you know, we wanted to continue on where 
uh, we left off. And one of our plans at that time, we'd always talked about doing a two-day event. Or um, we were also talking about doing a, uh, where, we, where we became a nonprofit organization, actually organizing the event. And uh, we were fortunate enough this year to have the opportunity to make it a two-day event for the first time we actually had a branded region con. So, um, yeah, we definitely plan on going forward with it in, in later years. And, you know, I don't want to put ourselves on the same level as Gen Con. It took a lot of work from a lot of people to do, you know, to get to where they are. But, you know what, even they started off small. So would I like to see it get to that point? Absolutely. I'd love to see it get to that point. Can you explain some of the tournaments and how they work? Yeah, we have um, 40K. Um, we have a 40, Warhammer 40K tournament. It's basically going to be uh, like a three-round tournament where, or three or four, I don't remember if it's three or four rounds. Uh, but basically after each round, you get points based off of how you perform in that round. And at the end, whoever has the most points is awarded the winner of the, uh, winner of the event. There's also going to be like uh, uh, painting uh, awards for like best painting job or, you know, best scheme, sort of like that. So we'll have that. That's a tabletop miniatures game where it's kind of like a futuristic war with orcs, dwarves, elves, sort of like that. Kind of like Lord of the Rings, but more futuristic, where they have laser pistols and things like that. We'll have Settlers of Catan. That's a really popular game here lately that uh, 1993 Klaus Tuber came up with. Really, really well-planned game that uh, we have an actually uh, an organized event that is sponsored by Asmodeus, the company that owns the game. So the winner of our event it will actually get an entry, a free entry into the national event at Origins in Ohio. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. Um, and then we have a BattleTech event, which is um, again, it's kind of a futuristic uh, tabletop war game where the players are instead of using like soldiers or whatever, they're using mechanical. It looks like giant robots, so it's a, it's a, kind of like mechanical wars kind of thing that's uh, that we have going on. And, you know, there's a lot of other things. There's some. Uh, a couple of Magic of uh, the Gathering draft events, one on Friday, one on Saturday. So, yeah, we got a lot of things going on. Yeah, I'm a big Settlers of Catan fan. Um, oh, yeah, a lot of fun. Love it. I may not be good tournament-wise, but uh, I like playing the game. You know what? Come on out and try it. You never know. You might get lucky and uh, have one of those days where the dice are rolling well for you and you end up in uh, Ohio competing for the Nationals. <laughs> yeah. So what are some of your personal favorites and why? Uh, I'm a big Catan guy, too. I, you know, I love Catan. A friend of mine showed me years ago how to play and uh, – I, I really had fun with it, but uh, you know that's that's one I really enjoy. Um, another one that I really enjoy, we probably won't have it there, but a game called Talisman. It's uh, you, you know you've heard the the, the horror stories about six hour games of Monopoly and Risk and stuff like that. Well, Talisman takes it to a different level. I've never played a game of Talisman that was less than ten hours. So, oh it's but it's a lot of fun. It's you don't realize it's been ten hours when you've been playing it. It's that much fun, but uh, but when you're done, you feel it. <laughs> it's. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites. And then, you know, I really like Blood Bowl, where the local game store that we have right now is one of our vendors, uh, Reliquary Gaming here in Cheston. They, uh, we have a Blood Bowl League going on up there where it's basically, again, the fantasy, the fantasy races like dwarves, elves, and such playing, playing football where, uh, you know, you keep track of touchdowns. But one of the fun things about it is they keep track of how many casualties you cause. So it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of based off of a, an old video game called uh, Mutant League Football back in the back in the eighties and nineties on the old uh, Sega and Nintendo systems. Huh. All right. So, will there be prizes awarded for tournament winners, or is it all for the honor? Yeah. No. No. It's definitely not for the honor. Uh, you know, as I stated with the forty k, there's the you know there's the prizes for you know the guy who wins. There's going to be some kind of trophy that we're that we're actually going to have. We have a. Uh, one of our members has got a 3D printer. We're going to design and, th- and print a uh, trophy for the winner. But it, but there's going to be the awards for the paint jobs and the schemes they create. The Catan, obviously, the award for that is, uh, you know, they're going to get to go to Origins. But we also have uh, everybody that participates in the Catan is going to get some kind of little token participation thing. But the farther you go in the event at Region Con, uh, the more you get. So the top 16 will get something in addition to what everybody else gets. Top four will get something in addition to that, and then obviously the winner gets that that coveted seat at uh, Origins. So um, there's that. BattleTech. Uh, the, the awesome thing about that is Catalyst Games uh, is providing the, pri- the prize support for that. So anybody that participates in the BattleTech will you know will have access to the prize support for them. The uh, individual stores that are running the Magic events they're they're providing prize support for that. Normally in the form of uh, extra booster packs, so you know we'll, we'll have to see what they decide because they might come up with something extra. So, yeah. uh, but that's generally what what you'll see. All right. 
So I see that there'll be entrant by the Roll Seekers. Who are the Roll Seekers and what do they do? Roll Seekers is basically a group that live streams their Dungeons and Dragons sessions, kind of like, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Critical Role, but they're very similar. They do the same sort of thing where, they're, where they have their uh, their sessions where they you know, where they film and you know people can tune in and uh, I don't know if they do it on Twitch but they but they definitely do some streaming streaming of their games and uh, so they're going to be there as like our guest uh, entertainment where um, people that are at the event can actually sit and watch them as they're as they're doing that but uh, one of the benefits of having them there is they've graciously offered to run some uh, some of the Dungeons and Dragons games for us as uh, as kind of a side thing before they do their show. Um, they're, they're going to have a kids event where it's 14 and under. They're going to have, uh, they're going to have one where, uh, anybody that's always the DM whenever they play is actually going to get a chance to play. So it's only for DMs. So they got a lot of cool stuff that they're doing as well with us. Sounds like the perfect thing for me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, like I said, come on out and join us. All right. So what can you tell us about the board game and collectible auction? Okay. So by the board games in uh, Lowell, Indiana, every year that we've done, uh, everywhere that they've been uh, with us at Arcticon or RegionCon, they do an auction where um, anybody that donates games that they don't play anymore, that's generally got all the pieces, if not most of the pieces there that people can actually bid on and, and they take home. And, you know, and the nice thing about it is, is it's always done really well. Uh, no, you know, there's never been really any conflict. Nobody, you know, there's no fist fights or anything to break out. It's always been a, a pretty, pretty neat to watch. They, uh, you know, they, they really got their, their thing going when it comes to the auction. Yeah. So Region Con 2023 is presented by NWI Swarm. What is that organization? Uh, NWI Swarm is a nonprofit that'll be raising funds to use for supporting our local community, uh, through donating those funds to worthy, reputable causes. In addition to help some of our uh, less fortunate community members. So uh, we just received on March 17th. We just received our uh, nonprofit status. So you know we're we uh, we're definitely excited about that. But uh, in past uh, Arcticon, we had always donated to uh, worthy causes. We did Wounded Warrior Project one year. We did Project 22. Uh, we've done where we donated to uh, help cover the costs of service animals for uh, veterans that are suffering from PTSD. Uh, a lot of those things, but we decided with uh, Region Con, we want to keep it local. So everything we all the uh, do, uh, organizations we've looked at donating to have all be, are, are all from local. So you know we're looking at like uh, Lakeshore Paws out of uh, Valparaiso. We're looking at like Aaron's Farm out of Hobart, Indiana. We're uh, the Hope Center, the chapter in Lowell, Indiana, the Care Center in Valparaiso. So there's, you know donors choose, which is. Um, an online crowdfunding type thing that teachers can list projects for their classrooms that they can use to help their students uh, understand the concepts that they're teaching in the classroom a little bit better. And, you know, you can donate money to those to make sure those projects are funded. So we're looking at all those and you know, we'd like to bring in enough to be able to contribute to all of them. But we kind of do have our, our an order of preference. If we don't have enough to do all of them, we at least know these are going to be the ones that we donate to. Yeah. So talk to me more about the vendors at RegionCon. Oh, it, we, you know, we got a lot of vendors that are coming out. Some of them are a lot of the ones that are returning from Arcticon. We got uh, Mischief and Mayhem and Azure. Uh, they do a lot of cool stuff. That a lot of theirs is steampunk uh, related. Um, Danny Burt Art, she's got a lot of great art that she, uh, that she brings with her. Uh, Sassy Dragon Trove, she's a new one this year. She uh, makes custom uh, resin dice and she does uh she does she'll do like uh coasters out of resin little knickknacks uh counters for games that she that she'll make out of uh resin uh found and ground uh tim fondre he's uh one of the guys that uh he finds different kinds of you know nice nice rocks laying around somewhere that he'll take and polish up and he'll ground down and he'll make jewelry out of those uh, so we got you know we got and then we got our obviously our main vendors by the board games out of Lowell, Indiana. Um, they're our main vendor that's going to be there on Saturday, and uh, Reliquary Gaming here in Chesterton. They're going to be our main vendor on Fridays. All right. So how many people are you expecting to attend the event? Well, in the past we've had up to close to 400 people at Arcticon. Um, you know, and it, and it took time to build that up. And Ben was a great guy, and a lot of people uh, liked being around him and what he was doing. And uh, you know, since we're kind of starting from scratch. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the knowledge that we had and how to organize Arcticon kind of went with him. I, and we picked up a few things over the years. So, you know, since we're starting as a rebranding and we lost a lot of the knowledge on how to organize these things, you know, I would honestly be happy with 250 people in the door. Uh, you know, if we get 400, great, but you know, 250 considering 
uh, where we're starting out and how we're how we're restarting. I, I think that would make me make me a happy guy. Yeah. So, which of the events do you think will be the most popular? Definitely the settlers at Catan, um, since it's uh, since the prize support is through Asmodeus, the, the company. Um, we they actually post on our on their website when we have an event. So anybody around the country that's looking for an event can see that we're having that event at Region Con. So we'll, we've in the past we've had people from Chicago, we've had people from Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, we've even had people from Detroit come to play at our uh, you know our Settlers of Catan events. So that's definitely a popular one. Um, 40K is another popular one. Uh, Chris June, uh, he he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of clout with the 40K community. So uh, he he brings a lot of players to those events when he runs one. So we're looking at probably 40 people for that event. So those are probably going to be our two biggest draws. We get a lot of people for the auctions. We get a lot of people playing uh, Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons. So, but I, I would say that our biggest draw is probably going to be Settlers of Catan and 40K. Yeah. So. Are there any other organizations or businesses that are helping put on RegionCon? Yes, definitely. We have uh, we obviously have our, our main vendors, uh, Reliquary Gaming uh, in Chesterton. We've got uh, By the Board Games and Entertainment in Lowell. We have Roll Seekers that's going to be running the uh, live stream at their at our event for us. Um, we also have uh, Ricochet Tacos. Uh, he's got two restaurant locations in one in Valparaiso, one in Crown Point, but he's also uh, the one that's going to be having the food truck there. We've had donations from a, a gaming group called the Dice Disciples that's located in northwest Indiana that's helped us out with some of the funding to help uh, cover some of the costs of uh, organizing these things. So, yeah, we've definitely had a lot of support from uh, several members of the community in several different locations throughout northwest Indiana. So is there anything else you'd like to tell us about RegionCon 2023 that we haven't talked about yet? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Um, I'd like to mention that none of the money that we receive through RegionCon goes into anybody's pockets. Everything that we bring in, once we've covered the cost of uh, organizing and uh, hall rental and covering our expenses, um, every single penny that we bring in above that goes to charity. None of us, uh, none of us are paid, even though it's a nonprofit organization where we can hire employees. Our employees are us, and we're all volunteers, so nobody gets paid for this. Every single penny we bring in goes to those charities. So where you hear some of these national, you know, some of the stories we've heard, like some of the national ones, that their CEO gets this large percentage and then the rest goes out. We don't do that. Everything that we bring in above paying for our costs goes out to charity. That's amazing. Well, that's going to wrap up things for this week's edition of the Porter County Perspective. I'd like to thank my guest, Darren Guest, for coming into WDSO to tell us all about RegionCon. It sounds like a lot of fun. I hope yes. you guys in. Yes, we have a lot of fun, and thank you for having me today. Of course. This has been Max Good for WDSO, signing off.